Get your word out. When Ezra opened the book of the law, the people stood. So we, it is our custom to stand for the reading of God's word here at Restoration Life. We stand for the word. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ho! Oh, yes, Lord. Woo! My, 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 my. Lord, have mercy. We go on there this morning as we have been in a series of messages called New Wine. Somebody say New Wine. How many of you are being blessed by the word? Well, we go on to the next level today. So put your seat belts on as we are going to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. Deuteronomy 6 chapter and we're going to start at the 10th verse. Deuteronomy 6 and 10. Glory to God. How many have your spiritual appetite ready? I mean you just smacking your lips. They, you just say feed me today. I'm ready. And I believe there are no coincidences in the kingdom of God. If you're on social media or if you are right here in this room. It is because the Lord has purpose for you to hear this word today. We haven't danced yet, but I believe before this is over, we're going to get our dance in. Amen. If you got it, say, I got it. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and godly cities, which thou buildest not and houses full of all good things which thou fillest not and wells digged which thou diggest not vineyards there go them grapes again and olive trees which thou plantest not when thou shalt have eaten and be full then beware lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Go back, please, to 11. Matter of fact, just a little bit of 10, maybe the B clause. To give thee great and goodly cities, which you did not build, houses full of all good things, which you did not feel, wells dig. You didn't dig them. Vineyards and olive trees, which you did not plant. When thou shalt have eaten, then you're going to be full. I'm going to talk about today the attitude of anticipation. The attitude. Now, I got some grapes back there. I want y'all to bring them grapes again. And this time, Elder Susan, bring me a glass. Bring me a glass. And bring me that same stool. I want the grapes. I want the glass and the stool. Somebody say the attitude of anticipation. Attitude has all to do with mindset. How you think about a thing. And expectation of something that will or shall come to pass so you got to have the right attitude right mindset let's pray spirit of the living God as we approach your throne of grace you have been talking to me all week in clarity how you wanted me to present this word you spoke it to me first so I can deliver this word to your people I pray in the matchless name of Jesus for the ones that are here and that will hear by social media that this prophetic word will hit their bosom. I sense in my spirit that something awesome is getting ready to take place. And I'm grateful that you have kept me alive for such a time as this to experience your goodness, your grace and mercy on another level. Everyone that is here and listening, bless them in a special way. 
and I pray that no imp or devil will be able to steal what you have sown in their heart today in Jesus the Christ name we pray come on can you give God praise come on give him praise come on give him praise get me a plate too a plate give me a plate you may be seated in the presence of the Lord you may be seated in the presence of the Lord well it's harvest time in this region and many farmers are enjoying the fruit of their labor the seeds that were sown in early spring have come up have now now they're getting ready to gather in the crops of the seeds that have been sown. I know for myself what that's like. Please consider wonderful people. Sowing and reaping, it is work. Let me say that again. Sowing and reaping is not an easy task. It is work. I know personally from having my own garden, the laborious task of having to till the ground to prepare it for this uh, next season or for the upcoming season of farming. Before planting, there must be preparation. There must be cultivation. Sometimes new soil has to be added because of the fierceness of the winter. Also, after planting, constant pruning of weeds that will come up masquerading itself as it is crops. So you have to pay attention, making sure that what's actually coming up is the real thing. There's also work in harvesting. Let me say that again. There's work in harvesting. You don't want to get it too early, and you don't want to get it too late. You want to be right on time when it's your harvest season. I have a sense that it is harvest for some of you. And you don't want to miss your opportunity to reap what you have sown. Now, wonderful people, Isaiah 51, he is singing, so to say, to ancient Israel. And the prophet Isaiah portrayed Israel metaphorically as a vineyard. All the work planted in the cultivating of the ground, preparation for the vineyard. All the stones had to be removed before the tender plants could be planted. Anything that was there that would take away from the land being able to produce. Also in ancient times, they also had what you called uh, 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 watchtowers. And the watchtower was for, was for vagrants or wild animals that would try to get in the vineyard. So they was watching. There was also a place, listen to me people, for the crushing of the grapes. Uh, certain places that were set up specifically so the wine could be made. It doesn't matter if you're talking about vineyard or olive groves, it is work. Let me say that again. It doesn't matter if it's vineyards or olive groves, it is work. And with that, it takes time for what you have sown to come up. I want you to repeat after me, it takes time. The Bible says in Genesis 8, 22, as long as the earth remains, seed time harvest, but it takes time. Everything you sow won't come up right away. Let me say this again. Everything that you are sowing into, you're sowing into your children. It does not mean it's going to happen right away. Let me give you what the Bible says. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's older, 
he will not depart. So that means there may be some crazy years, there may be some rebellious years, but what you have sown on the inside of your children, your sons and daughter, it will show up at a later date. So don't give up on the watering process because what you have sown will come to pass. It's the same thing for starting a business. Everything is not going to happen right away. All the customers are not going to come right away. But you keep cultivating the ground. You keep tilling the ground. You keep marketing. You keep telling people about it. And sooner or later, you're going to have people that are coming consistently to what you have sown into. It's the same thing for your marriage. Uh-oh. It's going to take time. When your wife shows up, it doesn't mean she's there. When the husband's husband shows up, it doesn't mean he got it all together. It takes time. It may be five. It may be ten. It may be 15 years before you have a real husband or wife. Are you willing to go through the tilling season? Are you willing for them to grow up and you grow up so you can come into the fullness of your harvest days? Or do you want them to hurry up so you can feel comfortable? It's not like that. It takes time. Somebody say it takes time. This is essential as with agriculture. It starts out in the spring where you're sowing. And then five, six months later, you begin to reap your harvest. But you can't reap harvest without the process. Lord, I'm going somewhere today. Process. Somebody say process. Some people want everything without process. Without method. Process has all to do with development. And development has all to do with change. Yes, yes, yes. I'm say it again. Process has all to do with development. Yes. And development has all to do with change. I have a question for you today. How well do you handle change? That's a Selah moment. Because most of us do not handle change well. We want everything to remain the same. But if you are going to develop, if you're going to process, if you're going to get what God has for you, you got to be willing to change. Oh, God. You got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You can't have this and keep the same mind. Your mind has to be transformed so you can have that. Oh, Lord, somebody say, help me, the Lord, today. If you're going to win, you can't be afraid to change. Oh, I'm going to say it on this side. If you want to win, how many people want to win in this room? You can't be afraid to change. You got to do things different. You got to see things different. If you want to change the body, you got to get in the gym and do the necessary thing. If you want new this or new that, you got to be willing to process and process this head so you can have the desired results. This requires an attitude adjustment. It is imperative that you work your field. Somebody say work your field. Your dream or your vision, it has to be worked. It cannot just be in your head. It has to be worked. You got to work your vision. You got to work your dream. You got to till the ground. You got to get it out of your head. And you gotta, because your thoughts are seeds uh -oh. that ultimately has to come into manifestation once you plant your seed. But you just can't keep it up here. You got to get it out of your head and begin to work your thoughts so it can be manifested in real time. Lord, y'all don't want this today. Somebody say, write your vision. 
work your vision so the vision will be manifested you got to do it and it's going to be work lord have mercy i'm going somewhere with this what you deserve i have a question i want to ask everybody today i'm just teaching before i start preaching where do you desire to be by this time next year where do you desire to be by the end of the year What are you doing to accomplish your goals? What are you processing? What are you developing? How are you working it? I'm asking some serious questions today. Because a lot of us, we are not willing to put in the work. So we can have the manifestation of our vision and plans and goals. Now, anything that's going to be processed has to be crushed. I'm going somewhere with this. Eating grapes as we did last week is good. Did y'all enjoy that? It's refreshing and it's nourishing. However, if you are going to have a wine life, the grapes have to be crushed. In order to see wine, Elder uh -huh. Betty, in order to see oil, uh -huh. there has to be a crushing of the olives. <laughs> Ooh. We got the grapes today. We got grapes. And they were good to us. But you cannot eat wine. You got to drink it. And so if you're going to process, you got to crush it to get the juice out of there now this is a messy process because see y'all ate it real good last week but now it don't look appetizing and you wouldn't dare eat this out of my hand because if you really want something in wine state it gotta be crushed and so where we are going in this wine series is going to recall or require a crushing development process tilling the ground is going to require process i know you wanted it your way but if you really want to see what you want to see come to pass in your life, you are going to have to experience the crushing. I know you like those grapes, but those grapes got to be crushed if you're going to get to the wine state. And some of us, we want to stay right here. But God says, oh, no, I'm taking you to the next level. I want to go to the next level. He said, I want you to go too, but you got to be crushed. <laughs> I want to get the juice out of that so you can be processed, so you can be. See, many of us want to stay at the child state. He said, but I want you to grow up in me. He said, I got so much for you. But if you are not willing to be crushed, if you're not willing to be developed in process, you're going to miss your opportunity for wine. And I have a sense in this place that many of you have been a part of the process and it really don't feel good because in the process, he reveals things about you. 
You want to reveal about everything else, but what's on the inside kind of come out. He said, I'm going to crush you until I get that attitude right. I'm going to crush you until I get that mouth right. I'm going to crush you until you get rid of your past. I'm going to crush you until you get rid of what somebody did to you at five years old. I'm going to crush you because I want you to get to the wine state. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm just in the crusher. Just give me some time. I'm developing. Look right in your neighbor's face and say, I'm developing. It don't feel good. I don't like it, but God is up to something in my life. Mm. Y'all see, I was eating real good last week, and now I'm crushing the very thing that I told you to eat. We were talking about them good grapes. Y'all remember? And now, mister, you done bought these grapes, and now you got to crush it? I dare you. Look at look at look at look how much juice is already coming from crushed grapes. This is what eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man, but nobody saw behind the closed doors when you went through the crushing. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going through the crushing, but you ain't seen nothing. I'm going to come out as pure gold. It hurts right now, but God is up to something. He's going to bless me. Everything that I've suffered, everything that I've been through, he's crushing me right now. But why? is on the way somebody say wine is on the way now wait this is this is messy but that juice looks good give me a little bit more of that give me some more of that yeah now hold on because I got some more to tell you and by the time I get through I think we're gonna run okay so the Lord the Lord says something to me he says in order Check this out, Brother David. He says, there got to be a mind and a language shift. Come on, Dr. Taylor. Mind and a language shift. And this came about from my research that one of the most expensive bottles of wine costs, Pastor Trina, over $500,000. So I was talking to a dear friend of mine and brother, brother that came and shocked me one time. We set him right up here. And I said, man, I thought that's absurd. That's ridiculous. Who would pay $500,000 for a bottle of wine? And he quickly corrected me. Because see, when you got a real friend, you got to learn how to receive because iron sharpeneth iron. And when I get in his presence, we sharpen one another. And so he said, you don't get it, James. Uh -oh. He said, when people are buying wine at that amount, he said, they are not concerned about money. They already have it. And not thinking about it running out. I said, oh my God, I got to come up. My mind is still poverty thinking. He said, when they are doing, when they're purchasing wine bottles at this level, these are investors. I said, oh, I had an epiphany from the Holy Ghost. God says, I'm talking to investors, not commoners. He said, you got to elevate your thinking to be able to receive on the level that I'm talking. He said, you've been thinking down here and that's why you can't handle when something's presented up here because you are used to being down here. He said, but I am talking to you up here. I want you to be an investor. 
Yeah. Investors always already have an anticipation of what's getting ready to take place. So when they buy it, they already know that the longer that I have it, it is going to gain more interest. They not thinking about money. They thinking about the investment of what it's going to do at a later date. Oh God. Somebody say, help me Lord. Real investment. The wine investor is not looking for grapes. A real wine investor is looking for wine. You teaching real good. Come on, Pastor. We still own the grapes. Lord, help us, Jesus. And God says, I want you to graduate to wine. Lord Jesus. You so busy thinking about crushing, you looking at it something bad. God says, I'm trying to invest me into you. Oh, God. Oh, God, man, y'all going to make me run. He said, I'm trying to get all of me through covenant into you because only thing you have is you and what you've been through. He said, I'm not that type of God. I sit high and look low. I'm the creator of all things, and I cannot live in you with the way that you think. So I crush you so you can be a new person to receive all of me. Investors already have an attitude of anticipation. Not an attitude, something going to go wrong. Not an attitude, it's not going to work out for me. Not an attitude, it's something, somebody talking about me. Investors ain't thinking about that stuff. They are on a whole nother level in their thinking. Look at that. Your pastor was like, that's too much. My God. You're a pastor that preaches. This, this conversation was two, three weeks ago. And I said, who would pay that much? He said, you looking at it the wrong way. All right. Okay. Did y'all, did that bless you? Now watch me. Now watch this. Watch this. Look at your neighbor and say, watch this. Watch this. Let's go back. To Deuteronomy 6 chapter. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> when God told, gave me this, I almost ran in my own house. It says, check it out. And it shall be. Y'all musicians better get ready. When the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land. Which he swore unto thy fathers. To Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now you do know we have been adopted into the royal family. The progenitors of the faith are our fathers. Yes, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not. Yes. Houses filled with all good things you did not provide. Yes. Wells you did not dig. Yes. Vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then you can eat and be satisfied. Yes. When God said, the last time I seen this, now let, follow me, follow me. The last time I seen, well, God gave something like this to somebody was Adam. Adam didn't build or dig nothing. Genesis, check it out. 2 and 8 says, now the Lord God had planted a garden in, east, in the east in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. I don't see process nowhere. Brother Pastor, we have gone through a whole thing of process. And you talking about grapes. But when we get to this, your verse your text that you read from, we don't see process. My God, my God. He said, this message is a prepared blessing. My God, my God, my God. Where you don't have to work, sweat, or labor. Hallelujah. He said, what I'm getting ready to do for you, I 
not been forming you for the blessing, but the blessing is prepared. And there I put the man I have formed. Oh God. And there I put the man I have formed. Only thing you're gonna have to do in this next season is manage what he blessed you with. You ain't seen what God is getting ready to do. He said, I got a prepared blessing. He said, you're not going to work for it. I'm going to do it. You're not going to till for it. Somebody else going to do it. You're not going to develop it. Somebody else going to do it. In the meantime, I've been working on you. And at the right time, I'm going to sit you right down in your own garden of Eden. Y'all don't want it. Y'all don't want it. Wine is a prepared blessing for investors. Wine is a prepared blessing for investors. Wine is a prepared blessing for shareholders. What are shareholders? Shareholders are owners. He said, what I'm getting ready to bless you with, you gonna own it. Y'all not getting this. I don't know why y'all not running. He said, your renting days and mortgage days is coming to a close. You gonna own it. It's gonna be yours. You ain't gonna have to pay nobody for nothing. You just gonna manage what God has blessed you with. I'm here to talk to some atoms in the room that God said, I'm going to put you right in it and it's going to be yours. Pressed down, shaking together, running over. See, that's why everybody couldn't be here for today because they can't own it. But for the owners in the house, I dare you to jump up and say, it's mine. Hey, 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 it's mine. You go own it. The car is yours. Own it. The house is yours. Own it. The business is yours. Own it. You got to elevate your ticket. It belongs to you. 500,000 ain't nothing. God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. It's yours. Elevate your ticket. He said, he said, I want you to have the attitude of anticipation. Your focus has been off. You're thinking about the wrong thing. That's why I told you at the beginning of the year, you got to focus. I get it now. It's almost 10 months later because I'm so accustomed and used to thinking down here. I'm used to talking down there. I'm not used to being around people that can challenge me to think on another level. You say, you were thinking about money. Investors don't think about money. You worried about something that God owns. The earth is the laws, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Hallelujah. See, everybody can't handle this type of teacher, but God says I had to crush you so you can be prepared. I'm working on you. The grapes represent you. Hallelujah. He said, I got to crush you so you can have a wine mind. Your mind is not thinking about wine. Your mind is thinking about trouble. But the word of the Lord came to me today. I almost started running when it said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, I don't even get to worry about my enemies. Stop talking about your enemies God says I got that and start looking at the investment Woo! 
Look at the investment. Pay attention to the blessing. Pay attention to where you're going. Be a shareholder. Be a wine investor. This is next level thinking. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not going there anymore. I'm not going, oh, no, 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 no. You're not talking to my talk. You want me to be in the shallow waters the rest of my life. I'm not having a fight with you. I'm not thinking about you. I'm thinking about investment. You mean all this time when I thought God was making the wine for me, he was crushing me so I can think on another level. All this time, I've been crying and upset and angry and mad because of the crushing. The crushing was for me. I'm mad about who left. God said they can't handle wine. They can't handle this stuff. They only want to eat. And you can't be an investor and eat up the investment. Boy, you can't be an investor and eat up your own investment. That's why he says, I want you to tithe. He said, if you tithe, check out in third chapter of Malachi, this blessed me too. He said, if you tithe, he said, he said, I won't allow your fruit of the vineyard to be cast before the time. Your fruit is on a time schedule. He said, I won't allow it to be cast before the time. I'm talking way up here today. I'm talking, I'm hoping you catching me in the Holy Ghost. He said, he said, I'm keeping your fruit connected. So it'll ripen. That when you eat it, it will be sweet. Not bitter. In Isaiah 51, God was angry with Israel. He said, because I planted a tender vine. And I got wild grapes in return. He said, I didn't plant you to be a wild grape. I planted you to be an investor. Boy, man, this message so challenged me, I couldn't get out of it. I, could, I was like, oh my God, I was, uh, here it is, I have a bachelor's, a master's, and a doctor's. And I'm still poking down here. Man, that thing, I was like, oh my God, the time I have wasted in my life having senseless conversations that are not investments. That, that thing blessed me so this week, it turned and changed how I saw myself. And that's what God said. I've been waiting for you to see yourself from the right perspective. You're not seeing yourself. He said, I want you to see your life as an investment. Everything that you're doing as an investment. And once you see yourself from the right perspective, you will plant yourself in gardens that is going to feed who you are. God planted a garden and he put the man that could think. Yes. The only thing that went wrong with Eve eating of the tree, she stopped thinking. Lord Jesus. And she started seeing herself opposed to seeing her God. Yes, yes. He said, I want you to invest. He said, you got all these trees to invest in. And you focused on one. That thing blessing me. I got to hear this again. You got all this stuff you can be doing and you focused on this knucklehead. You all this stuff you can be doing and the places you can go and the people you can see and the things you can invest in. And you are focused on the wrong thing. 
but after today there's going to be a change when you walk out that door you go going as an investor tell everybody I changed my name my name is not depressed my name is not oppressed my name is not cursed I'm blessed in the city blessed in the field my mind is focused get out of my way Woo! get out of my way Get out of my way! Get out of my way! Get out of my way! It's my time! My turn! So that's why, now that you got your mind, you go back and say, Father, I thank you for the crushing. Because if you didn't crush me, I wouldn't see myself right. If you didn't deal with me, you chasing those you love. Thank you for chasing me. Thank you because you had invested in me. And he said, that what I have invested in you. I know it can come up. So he'll crush you to get it out of you. Some of y'all gonna walk out of here and go buy the entire block. You getting ready to have some conversations on a whole nother level without thinking about the money. Cause God said, I got the money. I got the only thing you gotta do is exchange your faith. That's all you gotta do. Faith is the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. Your faith has increased while I was preaching. Your faith is going to the next dimension. Your faith is being ushered into a new segment of life. You will not be talking the same way because you are now an investor. Find two or three people and say, I am an investor. I am an investor. I am an investor. I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Say yeah. Say yeah. I dare you to give God praise for what took place in this place today. You're no longer being crushed. You're coming to wine. New wine belongs to you. Press down, shaking the kettle, and running over. So say yes. Woo! Yes! Oh! new opportunity get ready i'm gonna place you in the place you belong i'm gonna place you in the season you belong ay, 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 ay. yes lord somebody say yes well we want to dance on this so i want you to find a neighbor and tell your neighbor welcome to your new self and give god praise on your new self New opportunity, new doors. God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. New wine. New doors. I'm not thinking 
it like that. A new attitude, new hair, new clothes, new friends. Oh, somebody say yes, Lord. Somebody say yes, Lord. So, what y'all don't get, my wife and I oftentimes talk about how our taste buds have changed. We go to the store now, and the stuff we want got a price tag. But instead of saying, that's too high, say to the thing, I'm coming back to get you. Somebody say, I'm coming back to get you because it belongs to me. It's mine. The cost is not important, but the Jesus I serve, he is important. Oh, good God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Somebody say yes, Lord. Okay. All right. So, so, this today, wait, turn it down. Today was a class on investment. The investment is you. God says, I already prepared the blessing. I just been getting you together. Yeah. 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 All the crushing yeah. is getting you together. That's all it's been about all these years. He said, I'm gonna plant you in your own garden. Oh wait, I gotta go back. Now you can hear it for real. He said, the goodly cities I said, cities, you thinking about your house. God think about something. Told him. He said, the cities. He said, oh God, you didn't even build it. He says, your houses, they call it turnkey. When you go to a house and everything you need is already in it. I learned that from Home and Garden Channel. You just turn the key, the couch, the sofa, all the chairs and everything's already ready. He said, I'm gonna give you a turnkey where everything is already prepared. And you gonna, see, I've been teaching you about management skills, your eyes, your ears, and your mouth for the past 20 years. Cause that was gonna mess up what I had prepared for you. He said, now that you got a wine mentality, he said, I'm gonna give you wells you did not dig. Vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. See, the, this is where temptation comes in. Because temptation is, I'm still hungry. But he said, you're going to eat and be satisfied. That's all it was with the Samaritan woman. She was hungry. She's like, this stuff, you're you not satisfying. Bye. Next. But he said to the Samaritan, Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, if you drink of this water, he said, you won't thirst again. So he said, I've been working on your management all these years. All these years. He said, the blessing is already prepared. I needed you to elevate from crushing. Better yet, I needed you to elevate from eating. Because the only thing you want to do is eat, but you don't want to invest. 
He said, but if you're going to invest, you, he said, I got to crush because your mind is too low. You got to come up. Who received this word? Who received this word? For the business owners in this room, including me, you're going to see that thing from another perspective. Get these folk away from you that's pulling you down, talking you down, saying you can't do it, that's too much, that costs too much. You have not elevated to wine, mine. You still on grapes. I can't, uh-uh. I was corrected by my own friend, and it blessed me. It blessed me, man, it blessed me. When I got off the phone with him, I knew immediately I've been thinking too low. I'm talking about wine that costs 500000 I'm not. He said, no, no, no. See, you don't get it. These folk ain't thinking about money. They thinking about investment. I said, well, what about, oh, I forgot to tell this part. Well, what about the ones that drink it? They said, that's their investment. They still got the millions of dollars. They ain't thinking about it. And this is the choice wine that Jesus turned into for the governor. Ooh, I, ooh my God, I gotta, I gotta go back and listen, write some of this stuff down myself. Lord have mercy. There has to be an elevation in your thinking. Stop thinking about money and start thinking about the wine dresser. Give God praise. This message is for investors that are saying, you know what? It's more to it. It's, there's more. There's, there's got to be more to it than just coming to church and shouting got to be more to it than this god bless me i got i got i got some blessing yeah but i know in my heart this is not it i said to my wife just the other day i couldn't believe it came out of my mouth i said my worth has changed I remember the days where I couldn't see myself. I didn't see myself at all as being worthy. At 53, my worth has changed. What is your worth? Don't let nobody from this day forward Pull you down to their perception of your worth. That's half the argument. I don't see you as worthy. That's half the fight. When you see yourself appropriately, Those people that are saying opposite will leave. Yes, yes. You won't have to ask them to. They will leave. Who do you think you are? Who do you think I'm not? people, places, and things today. It changes. It's investors in this room. It's investors on social media. You can't hear this message and don't change. You can't hear a word like this. Don't make some changes. focus on that anymore. 
can't think about that. The enemy of your soul doesn't want you to see yourself clearly. That's what the fight has been about. He wants you to see yourself with a grasshopper mentality. That's what happened with the children of Israel. The first group missed out on the grapes and the wine and the cities because they didn't see themselves appropriately. Oh, it's giants over there. They didn't have management of mouth. Because God had done too much for them as he has for you. We're going to manage our eyes, our ears and mouth. We're going to accept ourselves as worthy. And we're going on. The argument is over. Now, you only know for yourself where that argument is lying. Sometimes it's in your own head. It can be with a person, family or friend. The argument is over. Why? Because I see myself appropriately. I'm not thinking about eating my grapes. I'm thinking about the investment of wine. <clears throat> Father, we thank you. For being so kind to give us revelation. That's all we need is revelation. You reveal your word to us so we can clearly see forgive us for our ignorance and for wasting time on people places and things that are not going to change give us the courage from this day because that's what you told Joshua take courage and go on over to the promise take courage we give you praise, glory, and honor for this new season and new day. For we are investors. We will no longer talk Egypt. We will talk the promise. Forgiving us when you've already blessed us for talking the language of the Egyptians and Babylonians. You have already given us a language. Through you, we are more than conquerors. In Jesus' name.